Hi everyone. So today I have a very important agenda with you. I today have a very very important educator with me. A very all of your favorite teacher, Dr. Sachin Arora, your favorite teacher from your UG days, from whom you have learned psychiatry. And today with Dr. Sachin Arora, I will sit and dissect your approach to residency. How should you go about psychiatry residency? What should be the do's? What should be the don'ts? And can we somehow help you navigate residency in the same manner in which we helped you at DAMS in your U UG days? So let me introduce Dr. Sachin first. Dr. Sachin, before you tell anything, anything about you that people don't know? People know that I am a psychiatrist consultant. People know that I am teaching, but people have to know that I have love for this subject right from my first class of DAMS that I attended in DAMS Nagpur. So my journey in psychiatry started after attending the first class in DAMS itself of psychiatry by my teacher, Dr. Rajiv Sharma, sir, with due respect. So actually, sir, undergraduates don't have much exposure to psychiatry yes. in most of the medical colleges. Yes. So even uh, that's true for all short subjects. Yes. I think many that's students come and tell me that they liked radiology after they attended radiology in DAMS. Yes. So I think short subjects, we are the people who plant that seed. Yes. <laughs> and you have to attend short subject class so that you know that whether you want to do post graduation in that. Totally understand. Nobody is teaching radiology, dermatology much in the colleges. So when I attended psychiatry, I thought this can also be a subject of a post-graduation. You get inspired by the teacher, you get inspired. Then I participated in national psychiatry quiz and then my inclination was towards psychiatry. So I'm studying, reading and teaching psychiatry for the last many years. But when the corona thing came and we utilized this as an opportunity when we were having less of face-to-face -face classes due to the pandemic, I, we launched sir an online postgraduate live tra training course and it was so so much liked by the students till now I'm you know we are having the, that course for last four to five years it is the oldest and the most famous post-graduation course till now students who have passed out who are already consultants they are also still referring to it I think you know Dr. Sachin is being humble 100% of the psychiatry residents study with him on the DAMS eMedicos app in the psychiatry resident course. Mm -hmm. So 100% is a big number. Mm -hmm. So Sachin, I want to know from you what are the components of the course and I also want to know from you that how should a student, I suppose I'm first year, mm -hmm. can I join you for three years and then what should be my approach in my first year? I'm just starting psychiatry. What mm -hmm. should I read? I'm not thinking of the exam right now. I'm beginning my journey. So when you start beginning uh, a journey in psychiatry, the first thing you have to understand is the basics of psychiatry, history taking, examination, basics of psychology, then come the diseases and then come the treatment that is the drugs part. So the basics of psychiatry have to be very right. So I have made separate video for basics of psychiatry. This is the similar content which we have read during NEET undergraduation or PG entrance preparation, but at a higher level of depth. Because the way postgraduate needs to know in psychiatry has to be more in depth as compared to undergraduates. So we start with symptomatology. So why it is necessary to take this course in the first year? Because they will know what books to read, how to read the book. We always feel in post-graduation, nobody teaches us the textbook. Mm. Suppose somebody teaches us Harrison line by line or your MRI book line by line. That is something which the students cherish. Yeah. So we have covered our standard textbook of psychiatry, Kaplan Sadok, from where you will go topic by topic and attend the lecture, read the same topic from the book so that the knowledge is uh, clustered together. I totally agree that you know when we are in post-graduation, we have to study more deep. Yeah. And I think that is a very valid point that Dr. Sachin has raised that when we are studying in MBBS, you still have an option that suppose I'm not able to deal with a patient, I can refer to someone else. Mm. But once you finish your MD, you are the last man standing, the buck stops at you. Mm. You have to then tell the patient what is to be done. So that is why we need to go deep. And uh, you know, many people come and ask me, sir, should I read about a rare disease? Why can't I only know the common disease? Then for rare disease, patient will go to another patient, another mm. doctor. So we have to be the last man standing and depth of knowledge. Like, like you said, you're teaching the entire textbook line by line. You are making sure that they get the depth of knowledge beyond what they see in their routine practice also, but which is relevant for the exam. Yes, relevant for passing the PG exam 
and also passing the DNB exam. Yes. There are many candidates doing DNB psychiatry in Asha Hyderabad, Vimans Vijayawada, Vimans New Delhi. So now we have more than 30 institute offering DNB courses. So in DNB courses, they have to pass the exam and DNB theory exam, you have 10, 10 marks question plus DNB practical is OSCE pattern. Yeah. So they have to understand in depth and or even MD candidates who are giving DNB passing exam, they also need in depth knowledge. Before I ask you the second question, one side question from what you are saying is that is the employment level for MD and DNB psychiatry similar or is there any discrimination that you have seen in your own practice and knowledge? Uh, as far as senior residency is concerned, it is equivalent. Uh, when you join as a senior resident, if your DNB is from a teaching institute and with the minimum qualification of bed, you will get the senior residency. When it comes to faculty, your senior residency must be completed along with a good profile CV that is publications, research, presentation, then you can get a faculty post. As far as private practice is concerned, it is up to you. As far as corporate psychiatry is concerned, then the MD and DNB candidates are hired at equal level. Equal level. Perfect. And also Sachin, uh, also when we now, if I now transition from my first year MD to second year, mm. what extra should I utilize in your course and what should be my approach otherwise in my hospital? So, uh, in my course, we have made different modules. Module 1, Child Psychiatry. Module 2, Adult Psychiatry. Module 3, De-Addiction. And very important, Psychopharmacology. Your entire practice of psychiatry depends on how much you know the drugs in depth. In MBBS level, we read the drug, drug, mechanism of action, side effect, that's all. But in PG, you are giving that drug. You have to know the dosage. You have to know rare side effects also, which are not read during undergraduation. In undergraduation, we are very selective about it. But in post-graduation, we have to be very holistic about it. So you have to go. When I teach autism to a MBBS student, I teach it for 15 to 20 minutes. But I have taught in this course autism alone for four hours. So two hours autism theory and two hours autism management. So a postgraduate is supposed to know autism in depth, ADHD in depth. A postgraduate is supposed to know those disorders in child psychiatry which you might not even have seen during post-graduation. As Sir was telling, we are the last man standing. So in three years of post-graduation, we might not see all cases. Yes. But we have to read all cases. Yes. And also, you know, Sachin, what I have learned uh, over the years is that uh, during my PG, I enjoyed studying more than I enjoyed in MBBS mm. because of the depth. In MBBS, you know, when we were reading many things, we took for granted. Mm. Okay, you know, this is what happens in scurvy, you see this. In MD, we could understand the reason behind it hmm. and the why behind it. And also another thing that is very enjoyable when we are reading for MD is you know different hypotheses also that some people believe that uh, autism is because of this. Some people believe this. Some people believe this. And these are the different management lines hmm. and you know why behind it. And when you explore all of that, that makes you truly feel like a science student, which mm. we sometimes forget. And I know in MBBS, many people are becoming like Ratna student mm -hmm. or the Grand. mnemonic <laughs> student rather than becoming the why student behind it. So uh, now and that why takes me to the third year. Third year, we have to change the gear to the exam. Yes. Suppose I'm a third year MD or a DNB, I have to give the exam. Mm. And now I want to now, you know, go back to that old days, ke, sir, padna hai, padna hai, pass karna hai. so how to go about that? In and third how, year, how do, what part of your course is more relevant to the third year? In third year, in fact, the more important is how to write the answers. So when we have covered these lectures, just below the lectures, we have given handwritten notes. And those handwritten notes are the model answers. For example, if you get a long question, neurobiology of schizophrenia. You have to explain neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, neuropathology and neuroimaging. And to spice it up, the neuroimaging in my course has been taught by none other than Sumer Sarekhan. There's a beautiful lecture, uh, neuroimaging for psychiatry residents. Everywhere else, neuroimaging for psychiatry residents is taught by only psychiatrists, except in this course where it is taught by a radiologist. He was the one who taught me what is MRI from T1, T2 and my MD final exam question was uh, <laughs> NCC MRI <laughs> which I could explain so well <laughs> because I read it in undergraduate itself. <laughs> totally and uh, Sachin now you know beyond the exams how do you see psychiatry as a specialty like uh, do you think that psychiatry is now the like 
evolving uh, in a way that now it has become one of the most highly demanded branch in private practice or what is your experience because i in my own circle and my own you know people that i see around i don't see that stigma in the mind of people that i'm going to a psychiatrist people are more than happy to go to a psychiatrist to know about small things like my child is not scoring well in the exam and what is the real life experience in practice it has changed a lot sir when i entered post graduation the number of md seats were 200 now we have 700 okay so 3.5 times increase the number of psychiatrists registered in indian psychiatric society are now more than 10000 since i am a part of ips now so and the practice what is going on now uh the patient who were needing medication they were coming to us now the patient who don't even need medication they come to us for consultation there's a concept of corporate psychiatry coming up industrial psychiatry coming up different different uh, ways and now even uh, you know people say i have to visit my brain doctor i have to visit my mental Therapy, health my management therapist. person <laughs> just like you visit your uh, chartered accountant for managing your finances you have to visit a psychiatrist for managing your emotions this is a new concept we are coming up with the concept of mental health immunity how do you train yourself to not get depressed when a stress approaches your life how do you do that coping mechanisms ah, so, so maybe we can have a separate talk on that in a different video huh? so in this section today what i have learned from dr sachin is that he's created a beautiful course for residents it is being followed by almost all residents in the country now which is a great achievement he has now recorded theory based lectures for on based on the main textbook of psychiatry for almost all specialties that are required for the students and they are catering to different needs at different times of your career in first year you would cater to different set of videos second year different and then when you are at the exam you have a different helpline with the doctor sachin helping you everywhere and many students who have studied from him i think they are top the university exams mm-hmm. and their md exams and particularly in dnb i see a massive change in the pass rate in yes. the students who join his course so i think uh, that takes forward the philosophy that uh, we started dams with my idea behind dams was always that we want to be your trusted education partner from your day one in medical school till the time you pass out probably beyond that also yes. probably beyond that also we should be helping you with your practice we should be helping you with the updates and that takes me to the final question have you catered to the updates in this yes. say video course or not all the new guidelines of treatment management whatever are coming i am trying to incorporate them all i have also added neurology lectures by my colleague dr achin mehra because a psychiatrist is supposed to know seizure disorder a psychiatrist is supposed to know how to differentiate a organic etiology versus a functional so we have added neurology and the most imp- famous thing about the course that my students are liking that it is not a conference where there is a ppt i have written every word with my own hands the same way which we used to teach in dams under graduation sir proper pen paper teaching proper writing where i write student write and this is what is liked by the students and everything new the neuromodulation from rtms to tdcs i am coming up with tdcs special videos rtms tdcs vns every new thing which is has been coming up i am trying to add all the new uh, guidelines new drugs in this course itself and the beauty of this course is it is available in a subscription of 12 months 24 36 months also mm-hmm. so somebody who is joining day one can be mentored for the entire period of md which is unique actually and uh, dr sachin any final words for all the budding psychiatrists budding dr sachins in the <laughs> video who are listening to you right now and want to know about psychiatry as a career is it good is it a good choice have they done the right thing by picking up psychiatry yes, what is your idea if you are looking at as a future reason you have taken the right choice and the right branch considering the demand the mental health needs of the population you are going in the right path and this is what sir told me when i asked him when shall i take psychiatry because my parents <laughs> are saying not to take it and he said if you are considering 10 years from now and i asked this question to him in 2012 and today we are making this video in 2025 2015 i am in practice from 3 patients a day to 30 patients a day the growth has been massive and now i can say that yes we have reached a level where psychiatry is the most sought after branch of the upcoming times it is actually and the way as a country we are going and the, at the speed at which we are going the progress whenever the progress happens you know i have a feeling that whenever progress happens at a pace in a country not everybody is able to get that same pace mm-hmm. some people get left behind they need help 
different sorts of way and i feel mental health would remain at the priority in the next 10 20 30 years and i think picking up psychiatry is a good choice i feel and i have guided many students a decade back as well because i could see it happening and when you see it around you know boss chahiye psychiatrist zarurat padta hai aisa nahi hai ki nahi hai and i think dr sachin has himself by his actions by his teachings planted the seed of the love for psychiatry in many mbba students mm-hmm. i feel uh, th- i'll give the last mic last you know opportunity to dr sachin to give a pump up message to the psychiatrist and the md resident listening to us we Anything are inspired by our teacher dr sumeer sir i asked him one question one day <laughs> if you wouldn't have taken radiology what else would you have taken and he replied psychiatry psychiatry this was enough for me to take psychiatry yes. so i am motivated by him <laughs> just I, like i him. i i love the way you know how people think it's something which is a way very important part of my life and uh, me and dr sachin many people may not be aware of is beyond the classes beyond the clinics very often we have deep discussions on how people think and why and what to do about it i think it, it is such a pleasure to you know have dr sachin here today and i am sure with under his guidance under his guidance in this beautiful psychiatry resident course you will benefit a lot not only for your exams beyond that in your practice as well we wish you all the best and do let us know in the comments how do you feel about the course and anything you want us to do extra for you in the course thank you